Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the HB FPV DX40. It's a micro Senwa featuring the Caddx Baby Turtle for your FPV and HD recording. We've got Happy Model 0803 12,000 kV motors, 40 millimeter gym fan tri-blade props. Flight controller is an F411 with a 12 amp 4 one ESC with a burst rating of up to 13 amps for 3 seconds. Between the Caddx Baby Turtle board and the flight controller is the Ishii Nano VTX, the version 1, which is power switchable from pit mode all the way up to 400 millimeter. Watts. Bottom plate appears to be 1.5 millimeters. Top plate is one millimeter. Motor post to motor post, I'm getting about 93 millimeters. It weighs 66 and a half grams. I tuned it and flew it primarily on this 2S 525 milliamp RDQ battery, which brings the weight up to 96 grams. And as in the thumbnail, with the Insta360 Go and the rubber band I used to mount, that brings our weight up to just about 115 grams. Insta360 Go footage will be in a separate video. It comes with some Velcro. It also comes with these little rubber feet, screwdriver, hex tool, and a prop remover. Caddx Baby Turtle accessory bag. This is what those little rubber feet were in. And of course, it does come with stickers. And we shouldn't forget the manual for the receiver. And I suppose the box it comes in could be handy. As we're sitting here on the ground, a uh, couple things to draw your attention out. The leaves will move around. If you look at the top left, they're barely moving. They will move around a little bit more as we get gusts. Uh, the weather data on this day, full overcast. I've had a lot of those days. Uh, nine mile an hour winds, gusts in the low teens. Of course, we're in town. We have the houses protecting us from that wind and those gusts, as well as the trees and flying low also helps. Uh, so I, as I said in the quick roll, I did tune this specifically for 2S. I flew it on 3S initially. It comes with just beta flight defaults and the motors get pretty hot. So I would be a little bit concerned long-term about flying this on 3S. If you get this tune, you know, spot on, the, the motors might run cool. RPM filtering is not enabled, so that's something else that we might be able to do to improve it a little bit as well. Uh, but I think 2S is probably the better choice for most. And I'm, I'm kind of happy that we finally got a micro send whoop. I know we've had HD and micros, and uh, as we climb to get to the top of the house, this is where we're going to see that wind take an impact. So this, again, is about a nine mile an hour wind. And one of the measuring sticks that I used for my tune was that descend around. Uh, in my experience, these sin whoops have a very difficult time descending. And so that was something that I was working on while I was flying this. Uh, the Wasp, the, the Wasp 85, if you guys remember that, I think that kind of prepared me. I, I think that I was, enjoying that wasp flight on the days that had more of a breeze and then on the days that had less of a breeze i'd go back to this now i'm not great i'm not you know running this through real steady to stabilize the footage or anything so this is straight out of the caddx baby turtle and i hit a few low weeds as i go around different things and i thought that was kind of fun why i kind of chose this and we also have a friend in the yard uh, near the end of the flight that we kind of play with a little bit. That was uh, an element that I thought was fun, something that I enjoyed, so I decided to pick this flight out of the flights that I had. Uh, it's kind of frustrating to tune for uh, a sin whoop. Uh, my experience was, you know, you had to go fly it, then you would go uh, take the SD card out, which isn't easy to get out of the uh, configuration that we've got here, and then I would take a look at the footage, try to diagnose what I might need to change in order to improve the stability and the smoothness of the footage, and then make those changes, then go back out and fly it again. So it took me some time uh, to get this tuned to my satisfaction. I think if you're in an environment that some of you do have of being very, very still, that would be the most ideal environment to fly this in. If you live in a windy place like I do, there are probably going to be certain days where it's just really really unflyable because it has those ducks it's not light it's going to kind of get pushed around by the wind if you have much wind again just to hit you over the head for the third time weather data shows nine miles an hour wind of course that's measured out in the clear and open we are not in the clear and open we're in town we have trees we have houses we have fencing that are all protecting uh, from the wind to a certain degree and flying low also helps but I did fly over the house to try to give us a small sample there plus I also wanted to show that descending I apologize for not having my Insta360 Go footage ready uh, I've had that for a while I didn't really jump on doing a video and the hype train to the the Insta360 Go I think it's a good product overall but I don't have my footage organized and I'm not prepared to include that in this video at this time uh, that might get some thumbs down, but that's what I have ready at this time. I'll prepare another video. I can show you that video 
when I have it prepared. The flight time, you can look at the YouTube timeline, but my recollection from my notes is it's somewhere around three minutes and 30 seconds. You'll get about that depending upon your battery maintenance and uh, how good your batteries are. You know, these RDQ batteries are made by GNB. I believe in GNB batteries. I've been flying them for quite a while. Some of the best batteries on the market. You might find bigger batteries that operate better for five inch quads, but when it comes to micro, it's really hard to beat RDQ and uh, therefore the GNB brand that makes the RDQ batteries. But you'll probably get close to three minutes and 30 seconds, if not four minutes, if you fly like I do. If you fly more aggressively, if you use more camera tilt, you'll probably find that that flight time decreases a little bit. Uh, there was also a benefit I failed to mention during the flight of the noise factor. Uh, Sin Whoops, in my experience, which is limited, is that they're very noisy. And I didn't think this was nearly as noisy. You may have noticed, you might want to go back and listen, that you could barely hear this over the mowers. And the mower was farther away than the sin whoop. So that's another benefit. Like if you're in a, a semi-public space or a public space and you want to fly discreetly and get some footage of whatever environment that you're in and get some of that crispy, clean HD footage, this would be less likely to draw attention than a traditional sin whoop. But a traditional sin whoop has a lot more weight and so it might handle more environmental or windy conditions better than this might as well. As I showed in the uh, thumbnail, I just added a little bit of the Uma Grip, which I did add to this one. I didn't use the big piece of Velcro they included. I don't like using Velcro, Velcro my batteries. I just, it feels like it's an extra step, but I would just thread it through this nice little slot we've got between uh, the carbon plates that hold the camera and the front standoffs. I would thread my rubber band through there and then I would loop it around on each side of the Insta360 Go and turn it on and do my recording and easy peasy it it seemed to work just fine that footage while i have looked at some of it i haven't been through it and i would have to process it through the uh the insta 360 app in order to get that ready for this video that's why i don't have this ready for you at this time as i showed you in the quick roll i did have this apart in order to see what vtx was in there there if you didn't notice there is a bracket inside that's made of the same material that these hoops are made out of that they mount the vtx in so it is secured in there it's not foam taped down or something kind of hodgepodge uh, we have this uh, receiver which is the ac900 it does futaba as well as fr sky and it does the eu uh, fr sky protocol as well it is foam taped and stuck down although i will say it seems to hold pretty well. I did not, I flew it in the front a little bit. Uh, I think I was on 3S at that time. I didn't have any range, but again, I'm a micro guy. I don't fly at long range. Uh, so that's something I can't report as far as this uh, receiver goes and how much range you will actually get out of it. I actually found the range on this receiver on other quads works better than the typical XM FR Sky receiver, if that's any of use to you. As far as the materials, these ducks, it's the same material that HB FPV has made on a previous quad that I really liked. Uh, this is the FF65. This is a 4S micro and it had a canopy on it that was made of that same material and that did explode. Uh, I had a crash falling out of a tree that was about house height and uh, that just exploded. Matter of fact, it, you know, I had the camera laying out and one of the wires ripped off of the solder pad. The solder pad didn't rip off, but the wire did. Uh, so this material is not going to be highly durable like a molded plastic would. Uh, the stuff that's on the ducts is what I'm speaking of. Um, I don't think you'll break it in typical crashes. I did have a few crashes. I ran into our stick pile at one point in time, and uh, I think I had a few of the tumbles from flying low. So if you're doing sin whoop type flying, I think that this will be fine. I don't think it, you'll break it, but there is a possibility there. I can't say for certain because I didn't fly it outside of that sin whoop style, that pretty slow flight style. While I was in the stack, I did lower the stack down a touch. So I pulled the standoffs that were in there because it was a touch higher. I didn't want it pressing down on the SD card area where I had the battery strap and I did want the battery strap to be pretty much in the middle so that I could get my battery as far forward as I could while still having space to mount the Insta360 Go. On the bottom side here, we'll take a look at the frame. I thought it was interesting. Something I would point out that we have holes uh, these are recessed holes and it kind of feels like that maybe this frame went through a couple of different iterations before they arrived here. Models that may be flying out of their mill may not have these holes. It's hard to say, but it seems kind of random places. This back hole does line up with this hole as well. Um, why we have this hole, I'm not certain. 
Obviously we have very little material between this hole and the edge of the carbon. I don't see that as an issue because we have all this protection outside. Of course, if you have an abrupt stop and the stack shifts, that could possibly fracture or break. Also, the screws around the ducts, they're Phillips headed, which I'm not crazy about, but they are recessed. So this is very smooth. We have these wires that come out of these holes that were obviously cut for that. And therefore, this connector must be able to thread through there. Um, you know, it, it does some wire management for you without having to do too much. See how thin this strut is here compared to the outside struts. That should be a good thing in order to be able to take an impact on the outside because these outside parts are thicker and then they're connected all the way around. We also have connection carbon between the hoops. And then, of course, we have everything you can see with the frame. It does look like you could bottom out if you choose to, but that USB port sticks up a fair bit. So you're going to need to use a thicker gummy pad. I chose to go with the top mount. Uh, again, I did shrink the stack down. You could probably go even further than I did, but this was just some uh, random stuff I had in a bin, quick reach, and I put it on there. Of course, we've got the foam around the side. Nothing really special to report other than it's just a safety feature um, that you may protect these ducts a little bit more from any sort of fractures they may occur because they do compress a fair bit as I press on them here with my finger. And so that should help absorb some of the impact and slow the quad down before it might have an impact point on the ducts of this material, what have you. Many people have troubles with the wiring on the Caddx Baby Turtle. Uh, this is the Whoop version, by the way. Uh, in this configuration, it should be fine because, you know, we've got these ducts all the way around the props. So we don't have to worry about a wire leaking out over the top. As you see down there, they did use the connector to connect. I believe that connector goes from the uh, Caddx board down to the flight controller. That could be, no, that is definitely from the Caddx board to the flight controller. The VTX, if you can see that wiring down in there, the VTX is wired directly to the board, no connector there. So there's a little bit of weight that we could drop, maybe a quarter gram or a tenth of a gram if you wanted to go that route uh, using that uh, direct solder method rather than a connector. Of course, we got an XT30 for our battery connection. We have this little niche cut out here. I think the hole, it was originally another thing with this frame design, was originally meant for the antenna to pop through. But with the length of the battery that I was using, I did I just put the antenna down here, ran the VTX at 200 milliwatts, and it worked out fine. Also, I, I'm not a big fan of the Canix Baby Turtle FPV view. It's a very narrow view. Um, I think the run cam version of this is a little bit wider view and a little bit more clear, although neither one of them are very good as far as the FPV view goes. So in your flight, that may change your perception of how close or far objects are away. Just something to be aware of. Uh, the posts are nylon. They're traditional, you know, plastic, if you want to call them that, but nylon standoffs, they are not metal. That may matter to you. Uh, the camera plates are cut for the carbon on both the top and the bottom, so those should be secure. It shouldn't flop around out of there. Although changing camera angle, if you wanted to screw the screw down tightly, is going to be a bit of a pain because we are going to have to remove the duct portion in order to be able to get to those screws. I left it at the default, which is actually kind of loose. You can change the camera angle to your heart's desire and uh, just kind of steady it there however and i found the camera angle didn't change even when i flew into our stick pile hb fpv seems to be kind of an assembler they buy parts from various vendors and then put them together maybe they cut their own frame maybe that's one of the original design parts of this we have happy model branded motors i suspect this board is possibly made by that same company that makes the wasp although it doesn't have the lettering around the usb port like the wasp did uh, but it has the same color scheme so it, it could be the same manufacturer it might not be uh, and then of course we've got the caddx baby turtle and the vtx is uh designed by Esheen. i thought it was pretty solid i thought with the tune that i had working which i will have a cli dump uh linked in the video description for 2s again this quad, my CLI dump, is on 2S. I thought it flew pretty well, and I thought the footage looked pretty good. We had a little bit of a shaker wobble from now and every now and again with the wind gust that would pop up depending upon what space I was in and the direction of that wind. Sometimes it had an impact, uh, but I was pretty happy with how it turned out. And it's one of those quads that if you're into this sort of flying and or footage, it's going to be kind of hard to beat. Yes, you could go with a traditional whoop that's got an HD camera in it, my experience with those is that they tend to show vibrations as the frame starts to loosen up after some banging around. 
So your mileage may vary long term. Of course, this long term, I think, should be pretty solid because it does have that carbon base to it. It's a quad I plan to keep around, uh, mainly because of this, which we'll talk about later. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in that section down below. I do appreciate your time, and thanks for watching.